Good morning, everyone. Jamie here. I hope you all are having a fantastic day today. I am having a pretty good morning so far. It is planting day. I am going to finally get all those plants that I purchased from the garden center into my oak tree garden bed, and I'm super excited about it. We have been having a heat wave for the past couple days, probably about three or four days, triple digits. <laughs> it's like so hot you know it gets to the point that you can't even be outside you have to be inside in the air conditioning so i've been spending so much time inside and i've been itching to get back out here today it's cloudy and the high is 81 degrees yay i'm so excited about it so both jason and i were like okay we got to be outside all day today so the plan is is we're going to get all as many of those plants as we can you know i don't want to I don't want to <laughs> overstate what I'm going to do and then get exhausted and have to stop. Um, I'm going to get as many of the plants that I purchased from the garden center into the oak tree garden bed. Let me turn around so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is the side of my house. This is the east side of my house. And this is my beautiful oak tree that I have right here. I share it with my neighbor and he and I decided that we would kind of meld the two properties because my property line stops right at the oak tree. So we were gonna kind of meld the two together, make it look like one cohesive garden bed and it's gonna be gorgeous. And I'm so excited about it. He, I've picked all purple plants cause he has this really pretty, let me see if I can, get over here to show you really pretty buttery yellow house you can see right there and then the complementary color to yellow is purple so all of the plants I got are purple I got uh, purple sea lavender and um, pugster blue butterfly bush and some pincushion flower really really beautiful this is only going to be like step one day one of this project because I couldn't fit all the plants in my car when I went to the garden center so you know this is just kind of round one I think that this is going to take me a couple weeks to finish um, and I'm not worried you know I'm not worried about it it's going to be it's it's a fun project to do you know I don't have a timeline or anything like that now um, it is basically summer it's basically summer here in northern California and so you usually don't want to plant plants so late in the summer I usually don't follow that I usually don't bother with not planting plants I mean if something's totally in full sun and it's kind of a how should I say wussy plant <laughs> a sensitive plant we'll say then um, I try and not plant it right in the middle of summer and obviously everything would be more happy if you planted it in spring I just don't have enough time to get everything done in the spring you know I have another job as well and I have kids so I just have to kind of spread it out throughout the year and that's what I've been doing ever since I started gardening and it's been totally fine I mean my honeysuckle espalier I installed when it was triple digits it was I remember because I remember going out there doing something running inside to cool off or jumping in the pool to cool off and then going back out <laughs> and doing a little bit more like I I I was determined to get that project done and that was that was in the heat the dead heat of the of the summer so and they all did fine so I'm not too worried about these especially because it's kind of like a filtered sun area you can see my neighbor's area has a little bit more morning sun um, so yeah so it should be a fun project Jason's helping me which is going to make it go a lot quicker and a lot smoother and I appreciate all of his help and hopefully everything goes well so let's get started Look at how pretty this is. <laughs> a wagon full of purple flowers going by pink and, and white flowers. Beautiful. I love it. Okay, so we have most of the plants back here. I still have to go get that liriope. <laughs> you guys, the pronunciation, I apologize. I, you, you all help me <laughs> how to pronounce this plant. Uh, liriope, I think it is, or I'll just call it lily turf by the common name. I have to go get, I still have three of those in the backyard I have to go grab. Um, and then you see I got six of these pugster blues, which are beautiful. This is not where they're gonna go. You know, I have to place them in all different places. Um, and then we'll start planting. And and yeah, so you can see that my neighbor has a bunch of Carex 
underneath his side. Um, and it, you know, he agrees. It just ended up not, not working out very well. I think mostly because this needs too much water to go underneath the oak tree. Um, so as a reminder, the oak tree, we, we live in California. So this is a California native oak and California native oaks are different than the other varieties of oaks around the country in that they are super, super drought tolerant and they will actually, you can actually do damage to them by having too much irrigation to them. So anytime you want to plant something underneath a California native oak, you want it to be super drought tolerant and not irrigate it, you know, because you don't want the plant, you don't want the oak tree to, um, uh, rot and get sick and die and this giant you know thousand year old oak tree to fall over because you planted too many plants underneath it um so i don't you know i don't think that this is a problem i don't i wouldn't feel bad leaving these here um but it does also like let me show you this one when the oak tree loses its leaves it gets all its leaves inside this grass and so it doesn't really look very good and then also you get um, a ton of weeds in this grass that are really hard to pull out. So it's probably just not the best choice for here. I think I'm going to transplant these and put like bunches in a couple places around this, you know, these two garden beds. Um, but we'll kind of see uh, how it goes. Um, and you can see he has his lily turf kind of spread out. He has one, two, three, and then I'm going to move my two four, five, and then six, seven, eight is, is what I have out here. So yeah, so, um, and then the only, let's see, what else, what else do we have still back there? Oh, the Santa Barbara salvia, we have to get that too. We got a lot of work to do today. Yes, we do. <laughs> We've got all the plants in and they are looking gorgeous. It's kind of windy. I do have my mic on. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Um, I'll do a voiceover if, if <laughs> the audio doesn't work very well. But we got every single plant in and it's only like 1030, which is incredible. I'm proud of us. Jason and I, we worked hard. So I have to say, I love it. I'm loving, loving all the purple. It's really hard to see because of the lighting and everything like that, but it's looking gorgeous. And I can see my vision coming to light. Like uh, I did start off with all the plants in the front and I have a lot more plants planned from the back, but they're kind of more foundational plants. So um, not as fun, not as interesting, um, but I really, really like what we picked out for the front here. So this is Pugster Blue Butterfly, Bu butterfly Bush from Proven Winners. It's only going to get two by two. It's not a giant butterfly bush. So I think it's going to be perfect in this spot. 
Then we have this one. Pretty much every neighbor that has walked by has asked me what this one is. This is a sea lavender or a limonium, and it's just absolutely beautiful. I love it. It does really well in dry conditions here, and I think it's going to be very happy. You can see I transplanted the two uh, lily turf. They were kind of back there, and I put them along the edge and then planted another one over here. This is a new one right there. And then I have this one that I'm going to plant right here in the corner, but my sunflower weed is in the way. <laughs> I want to, I want to harvest this first. It's, I mean, I'm like days away, so it's not going to be that big of a deal. I'll be able to plant that probably later on this week. I have the Santa Barbara salvia here, which I think is going to be really happy because this spot is very, very dry. Um, and then you guys can see I did this last week. These are my Plumbago espalier, and these I transplanted from the cottage garden, which is just a little bit over that way. They, I cut off so many of the roots because the roots were so deep, and I thought that they were all going to die. This is the one that I was most worried about and I cut it all the way back, but I think it's perking up. I think it's looking okay. It still has leaves. The leaves are not wilted. It's not the prettiest plant right now, but I think there's life in it. So excited about that. These two look fantastic. Really good. I think that's going to be so pretty. I still have to move these Japanese painted ferns. Here is my Belle Etoile Mock Orange, this little nothing of a plant that I got from Annie's Annuals, but it's gonna get five feet tall, so it's gonna be beautiful right there. And then over onto my neighbor's side, we still have all these grasses here, but you know, the more I'm looking at them, the more I'm thinking, they just don't belong here. They require way too much water to be right on, um, underneath this oak tree. And I think it'll be prettier if I take them out. We won't have as many weeds to deal with either. So I think I'm, he already gave me the all clear to basically do whatever I wanted. And so I didn't want to, you know, jump the gun and take them all out first, but I started pulling a couple of them out. You can see my mess over here and it just looks so much cleaner and it looks so much nicer. So I think I think Jason and I are gonna get a little snack, maybe a cup of coffee, and then we'll come back and we'll start taking these grasses out. Let me walk you guys to my neighbor's house. This is uh, right across the street from me. And this is, she's the one that has the gorgeous sea lavender. Let me just show you right here. Look at this, so beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And you can see it's in shade right now. It's almost full shade. Um, so this was my inspiration for the sea lavender over on my garden bed, because I think that it will be very similar um, uh, lighting requirements. And then you can see she has roses back there um, and then some agapanthus. And then what is this called? Mexican rose, I think. Very pretty. Very pretty. This was an option that I could have planted underneath the uh, oak tree as well. So yeah, just a really, really pretty garden bed, but I absolutely love her sea lavender. we are done at least with this phase of the project we got every single plant in except for that one lily turf over by the sunflower that i just don't want to plant yet that sunflower even just today the the, the petals are starting to open so i'm sure in just a couple days i'll be able to plant that guy so yeah i love it i think it looks so beautiful and i can see how gorgeous it's going to look when we're finally all done this is only like half the plants that i plan to go here so i think once i get the rest of them in it's going to be beautiful and my neighbors are so happy which is you know just icing on the cake jason's behind me he's just finishing cleaning uh, but i wanted to show you guys everything that we did now i will say i did not get irrigation in yet um, there is some tubing we took out the neighbor's tubing because it was just it uh, when it was, uh, 
when it was watering those grasses, there was just too many irrigation uh, emitters. And so we're just gonna start fresh. I think that mine on my side, we can kind of just leave it and just kind of add to it as, as we need to. And what I wanna do with that is I wanna do just one emitter per plant because I don't wanna waste any extra water and I don't want any extra water going to this tree. So I'm not gonna do that in this video because I'm sure this video is way too long already. And let me show you guys the finished, well, the finish for today <laughs> look. All right, so starting from my sidewalk, you come here and the first thing you see is my volunteer sunflower, my sunflower weed. You can see the petals are already starting to come. Um, so almost done with that guy. And then I will use it in a cut flower arrangement as long as it's pretty, as long as it's a pretty sunflower. So you can see that one liriope, um, Oh, I think that's how you actually say it, <laughs> lily turf. I still have to plant that one and it's gonna go right where that sunflower is. Um, and then you can see as we go here, doesn't it look gorgeous? Oh, I'm so, so happy with it. So we have the Salvia Lucantha or Santa Barbara Salvia, love that. More of the lily turf kind of dotted all along. And I think what I will do, probably not this round, but I think what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll put a lily turf in, you can see, so you see the squares in the sidewalk. We just um, divided them you know put one every two squares and i think what i'll do is i'll come in and i'll put another one in between each second one just to kind of fill it up a little bit more and make it even more of a border all along here wouldn't that be pretty um so yeah so that's the lily turf and then i have the pin cushion flower right here it's not totally in bloom but there's tons of buds on these plants so it's coming it's gonna start blooming and then oh gorgeous sea lavender it's just like the camera is just not doing it justice you guys just it's so beautiful it's so interesting because it has these purple flowers and then let me see if i can hold it still it has like white flowers interspersed it's just the prettiest plant and it i mean i don't know it's just not a very common or well-known plant and i'm just not sure why because i just think it's so beautiful and then of course we have uh, the Pugster Blue Butterfly Bush, which is only gonna get, I don't know, maybe like this tall and this wide. So it's just gonna be cute little domes. Like I said, there's still a lot more stuff that's gonna come back here. But for right now, this is the first layer and I think it's really pretty. And yes, I probably should have started with my foundation plants, but I just wanted to get some color in here and I wanted a cohesive look all the way through. So we'll come over here to my neighbor's side. So you can kind of see the line. This is where the mulch was, um, the mulch stopped. And then here's the tree. So our, my property line is like right where that fence is right there. But he's been really cool about it. They both have both, both of them, um, the couple that lives here. And they've just, you know, they're happy to have us kind of extend it all the way through. And it looks kind of sparse right here, right now. And that's just because I haven't bought the plants that I'm putting right here. So it's gonna be kind of swooped all around here and even back behind the tree. I'm leaving, um, a circle around the oak tree that I will not be planting in and I'll just mulch it up because that's what you're supposed to do with the California native oak but you can see just kind of brought the whole the same color story all the way through here um, and then I left his daylilies that I think those are orange which I think will be really pretty with the purple he does have this gorgeous lantana here really pretty bright pop so you can see if a lantana thrives and he cut this he just told me he cut this way way back this year normally he says it comes all the way out and comes all the way out here so if a lantana thrives right here you can imagine how much sun this place the spot actually does get it does get enough sun that i think the butterfly bushes and the sea lavender are going to be totally fine so i am really really excited about this garden bed i think that once it starts filling in and once we finish getting all the little plants kind of in between plants and mulching the whole thing up it's going to be gorgeous absolutely beautiful all right so that is it for this video stay tuned for probably tomorrow or maybe the next day for my irrigation video when I add irrigation to this garden I'm probably going to do that later today because it is so beautiful today it has been so pleasant to work outside both Jason and I are commenting how we're really not sweating and that's not normal <laughs> for June here in Northern California. So we are really enjoying today. It is a good gardening day. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. This 
round of getting the planting done. I'm so happy that we got some color in this garden bed and I'm happy that the plants got in and then all like it was like my eyes were opened and I could see really what this garden bed is going to look like and I'm super excited about it now. So if you guys enjoyed this please consider subscribing and I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today.